Hello everyone, I hope you are doing really, really well at home. Okay, this is instructive video for session number six. In this uh, worksheet, this week we're going to be starting a new unit. Okay, so in this video I'm going to go over the exercises and the contents for this week. Okay, so let's go to our worksheet and start looking at the exercises. Okay. So, at the beginning of the class, you need to do the following. Read the following sentences, one, two, three, and four. Then order the sentences on the timelines, okay? So, you have to read each one of these sentences, and then you need to tell me where in the timeline you would put them, okay? So, tienen que leer las oraciones y decirme en qué parte de la línea de tiempo ocurre cada una. We have past, the now, the present, of course, and the future, okay? And we have the following sentences. Number one, I went to New York on March. Number two, I will go to Moscow next year. Three, I have bought tickets on January. And number four, I'm home now, okay? So, read the sentences and order them on the timeline. I'm sorry. Okay, now we move on to the first exercise, okay, after the beginning, which is a reading. So, in this exercise, we have to read the text and circle the following words, then look for their meaning in a dictionary, okay? So, first, you're going to read the text, you're going to look for these words in the text, you're going to circle them or underline them, and then you're going to go to a dictionary, like Cambridge Dictionary or Merriam-Webster Dictionary, some dictionaries I showed you like a couple of weeks ago, and you're going to look for their meaning, okay? So, lean el texto, busque las palabras en el texto, subrayela o encerla, luego va al diccionario y busque el significado. Excellent. So, after you do that, you need to do exercise number two. You need to read the text again, of course, and answer the following questions, okay? I'm going to go with the questions so you can have a better understanding of what of each of these questions mean. So, number one, what's the best food Alex has ever eaten, okay? ¿Cuál es la mejor comida que Alex ha comido en su vida? Number two, how many days did Alex spend on Galapagos? ¿Cuántos días Alex se quedó en la isla Galapagos? Number three, what does Alex ask her readers to do? ¿Qué es lo que Alex le pide a sus lectores que hagan? Number four. How many animal species disappeared last year? Okay. ¿Cuántas especies de animales desaparecieron el año pasado? And number five. What negative comment does, does I'm sorry, Alex make about her trip? ¿Qué comentario negativo Alex hace sobre este viaje a las Islas Galápagos? Okay. So... Again, answer the questions, use complete answers, subject, verb, and complement, and you're good to go, okay? So, after you do that, you need to do exercise number three, in which you need to read the sentences. For example, Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of a species after he visited the Galapagos. And then you need to tell me which action happened first or which action came first, okay? So, there we have the sentence, and here we have the two actions, okay? So, the first action, Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of a species, and the second action, Charles Darwin visited the Galapagos, okay? So, you need to tell me which one of these two actions came first. In the example, Charles Darwin visited the Galapagos, happened first, and then the Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of a species that happened second, okay? En este ejercicio tienen que leer primero la oración que está aquí arriba, que por la dice 1, 2, 3, 4, y luego tienen que leer las que están abajito, A y B, A y B, A y B. Y tienen que decirme de A y B cuál pasó primero y cuál pasó en segundo lugar, ¿ok? So, for example, primero, estas dos, primero lo que hizo Charles Darwin fue visitar la isla, Galo la, perdón, la, la isla Galápagos y en segunda instancia escribió el libro on the origin of a species, okay? So, again, read the sentences, then read the actions, and tell me which one happens, happened first, and which what happened 
second, okay? And again, if the action happened first, you write a one. If the action happened second, you write a two. Okay, very nice. Let's move over, okay? So now we're going to cover grammar. In this week, we're going to cover past perfects, okay? Just past, perf past perfects. And in the following weeks, we're going to be discussing and, and learning how the past perfect relates to other tenses, okay? So, in esta guía, en esta sesión, vamos a ver sobre el pasado perfecto, okay? Y en semana siguiente, vamos a ver cómo el pasado perfecto se relaciona con otros tiempos verbales, okay? So, past perfect. We use the past perfect to talk about actions, okay, that happened before other action in the past, okay? Hablamos, jugamos el presente, el pasado, el pasado perfecto, lo siento. El pasado perfecto para hablar sobre acciones que pasaron antes que otras acciones en el pasado. Bien, ¿qué significa esto? Por ejemplo, si yo digo, fui a comprar. Y después digo, me, me levanté. Levantarme. Eh, sucede antes que ir a comprar, ¿bien? Por eso, en este caso, el levantarme iría en past perfect y el feo comprar iría en pasado, ¿ok? And that's the idea. Actions that happened before other action in the past. Estamos hablando del pasado más remoto, ¿bien? Don't worry if you don't get it just now. We're going to be focusing only in the structure today and then, as I told you before, we're going to be... Uh, learning how this tense relates to other tenses, okay? Puede ser un poco complicada la idea por ahora, pero en esta sesión vamos a centrarnos solamente en la estructura del pasado perfecto y después vamos a eh, aprender y ver cómo este tiempo verbal se relaciona con los demás tiempos verbales del pasado, ¿bien? So, for the past, ten past perfect tense, we use the auxiliary had, that's the auxiliary, okay, okay, had, that tells me that our sentence is in the past perfect, plus the past participle form of the verb, okay, so, para hacer el pasado perfecto, necesitamos el auxiliar had, okay, had, h-a-d, y el verbo en el pasado participio, se acuerdan de la columna de verbos, Tenemos presente, pasado y pasado participio, ¿ok? Entonces, jugamos la tercera columna de verbos, ¿ok? Entonces, la combinación entre had y past participles nos va a decir a nosotros, ¿ok? This sentence is in the past perfect, ¿ok? Esta oración está en el pasado perfecto, ¿ok? So, examples. I had bought chocolate. She hadn't thought about it, ¿ok? Yo había comprado chocolate... Ella no había pensado sobre eso, ¿bien? So, for affirmative sentences, we use had plus past participle. I had gone to the, to the bathroom. He had seen that movie. Pretty straightforward. For negative sentence, we use hadn't or had not plus the past participle, okay? I hadn't been there before. She hadn't woken up. And if you notice right here, had and hadn't is the same with all the subjects, okay? You don't need to change had or hadn't for any subjects, okay? So, hi, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, had. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, hadn't, okay? El had y el hadn't se ocupan con todos los sujetos de la misma manera, bien? Okay, so, very straightforward. Let's move on to exercise five, okay? Okay, so for exercise number five, you need to complete the story with the correct past perfect form of the verbs in parentheses, okay? So here you have a tale, a story about something, and you need to complete each gap with the correct past perfect form of the verbs in parentheses, okay? So, tienen que leer esta historia. Ya, y completarla con la forma correcta del pasado perfecto del verbo que está aquí, ¿ya? Por ejemplo, aquí partimos con we and book, ¿ok? Que es agendar o que es eh, reservar. Entonces, bien. We had booked. 
that was the correct form of the past perfect. Bien, y had lo podemos reducir a apostrophe D. So, we had booked a week's vacation, ¿ok? Ahí pueden comentar la oración. Tengan cuidado porque los que tengan not adelante, por ejemplo, not visit, o not be, o not cook, tienen que ir en negativo. O sea, tienen que ir con hadn't, ¿ok? So, again, complete the story with the correct past perfect form of the verbs in parentheses, ¿ok? Ocupando had o hadn't y ocupando, recuerden, el past participle, el participio pasado, el pasado participio, ¿bien? Ok, and after you have done that, you, you get to the closure of the class in which you need to complete this small short think box, ok? So you need to read the sentences and then you need to complete the rules, ok? So the sentences are, it was the best food I'd eaten, I hadn't realized that tortoise could be so big, ok? So... We form the past perfect we had or, okay, you need to complete what goes there and plus participle. And the contracted form of had is, y la forma abreviada de had, como es, okay, and you complete right there. And that's it for this week. I hope everything was clear. If you have any doubts, please write me an email and we'll see each other in our Zoom class and in the next video, okay? So see you soon. Take care, stay home, and see you when I see you again. Bye.